Welcome to lecture 5.2 and 5.3, the dermis and burns. The dermis is located between the epidermis and the subcutaneous layer, and it anchors the epidermal accessory structures like your sweat glands, your hair, hair follicles, etc. There's two components there, the outer papillary layer, which is 20% of your dermis, and the deeper reticular layer, which is a lot deeper and larger, making up 80% of the dermis. The papillary layer consists of areolar tissue. It has capillaries, so there's some blood flow, lymphatic vessels, and sensory neurons. It's named for those epidermal ridges, which is made from those dermal papillae, which are nipple-like projections between the epidermal ridges. When it becomes inflamed, that's known as dermatitis. So when you see here, it says itis at the end of the word, that means inflammation of. So this is inflammation of the dermis. This is caused by an infection, uh, some kind of mechanical irritation, chemicals, radiation. So poison ivy is mentioned here. I all of a sudden have poison ivy in my yard. I don't know if it's from the guy that clipped my bushes or if it's from a bird or somehow it got distributed. I now have it in three different places, so I have to be really careful. So when you become irritated, this may produce itching or pain. The reticular layer consists of dense, irregular connective tissue. So we skip tissue, so you can see the picture here um, showing you with the collagen fibers and the elastic fibers. The dermis contains all cells of connect, connect, connective tissue proper, excuse me. The dermal strength and elasticity of the dermis, uh, it has collagen, elastic fibers, and the collagen makes it really strong and it resists stretching. It's also easy to bend, um, but this limits the flexibility so that your tissues go, don't get damaged. The elastic property allows it to recoil, all right, and provide flexibility. Uh, having these features, and having fibers and water um, that provides the flexibility, flexibility and the resilience, and that is known as having skin turgor, which helps with shape. Skin damage. Your skin can lose the skin turgor uh, by being dehydrated, which is reversible, aging, hormones and UV radiation. It's extremely important that you stay out of the sun. Um, and when you're young, you might not see anything, but then you get older and you get wrinkles. Uh, I got a couple of bad birds going to Mexico, uh, probably in my late thirties and 46 now, and now I have these terrible wrinkles on my forehead that I wish I would have protected. If there is ex uh, like extensive distortion of your skin, or if you gain weight fast, um, you can get dermal tears, which are known as stretch marks. And those are very hard to get rid of. They really don't go away unless you have them cosmetically done. Tension lines are known as cleavage lines. Uh, these are produced by parallel bundles of collagen. I'll show you a picture of this. And elastic fibers in the dermis. And they resist force applied to the skin. All right, so if you have a surgery... Uh, these tension lines, these cleavage lines, it's nice if uh, where you have to have your incision is parallel to that tension line because it'll feel better. Uh, if it's at a right angle, you're going to have more of a scar because it won't feel as easy. So these are those cleavage or tension lines. So you can see a lot of people have knee surgery and you can see those are horizontal. So most people, they do the, the cut right down the midline. So it'd be like a sagittal cut, and that's why you often see the scar. Blood supply in the dermis. There is a cutaneous plexus and a subpapillary plexus. The cutaneous plexus is a deep network of arteries that are in the reticular layer. There are, is a small network of arteries in the papillary layer and that's like right below, okay, so it's the subpapillary plexus, and they drain into small veins that lead to the large veins that are in that subcutaneous layers. If 
you get a bruise and probably everyone has, that is caused by damage to a blood vessel in the dermis. All right, so again, look at your diagram and make sure you know this is your papillary layer right here. Those are those dermal ridges. You can see the dermal papillae right here. There's the ridges. Like I was showing you, uh, your reticular layer, you can see the subpapillary plexus. So there's the blood vessels. Here's the cutaneous plexus here. This is the subpapillary plexus because it's under that, you know, it's right here. It kept, it's a loop of the subpapillary plexus. Nerves innervate the skin. Uh, they help control the blood flow. They adjust gland secretion rates. You know, how fast or slow glands are secreting materials and they monitor your sensory receptors. So monitor like your ability to feel. So those sensory receptors is what I wanna talk about. If, if there's a difference between if it's a light touch or if it's deep pressure or vibration. If it's light touch, that would be the tactile or Meissner corpuscles in the dermal papilla. So closer up towards the top, it's gonna to be sensation of light touch, deeper pressure and Vibration are going to be the lamellar corpuscles, and that is going to be in the reticular layer. The subcutaneous layer, your hypodermis, so sub underneath. Okay, so this is deeper to the dermis. It's connected to that reticular layer by connective tissue. It stabilizes the position of the skin, and as I pointed out before, but it's mainly made of adipose tissue, which is fat tissue. So all the yellow, and you can see right here in the picture, these adipocytes, sites mean cells, adipose, adipo is referring to the fat cells. So you can see what that looks like. The larger arteries and veins are going to be in the superficial region. The subcutaneous layer or the hypodermis is the site of subcutaneous injections using hypodermic needles. And how much fat a person has is determined by the sex hormones. So females and males both have estrogen and testosterone. Those aren't the only ones, but the estrogen females have more of as females do need more fat. Females have a higher body fat percentages and that's so that they can uh, bear children. I wanna talk a little bit to you about burns. Uh, your book doesn't have a ton of it, but I think this is important to go over. When there's a burn, the tissue is damaged, and that means that the proteins are denatured, right? And the cells die. Immediate concerns are going to be dehydration, losing fluids, infection, and electrolyte balance. So balance of the salts and the fluids that are in the body. When doctors evaluate a burn, they use the rule of nines. This is the percentage of body burns to estimate fluid loss. They also look at the depth and thickness of the burn. So you can see here, this is a first degree burn. You can see this is, the, this is like the epidermis. And then second degree you can see is going into the dermis and third degree goes dermis and even into that hypodermis level. And when I say nines here, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but you can see there's a, based on the age, you can see the numbers go up because the size of the individual goes up as well. So it's like what percentage is burned So again, first degree is the epidermis. There's redness, edema, and pain. You might have had one of those before. Second degree, there's epidermal and superficial dermal damage. And third degree, I'm sorry, second degree, I should have said infection. Third degree, there's epidermal and dermal damage. Sometimes it can go even deeper. It appears gray, white, 
cherry red or black. This reminds me of like the, the burnt hot dog. Uh, there's no swelling or pain because everything is completely damaged. And this is going to require a skin graft. Burns are critical if more than 25% of the body has a second degree or 10 greater than 10% of the body has a third degree. Treatment for a burn is debridement of burned skin, fluids, antibiotics, temporary coverings, and skin grafts. 